good morning students i am here to discuss you about pemphigus overview of my topic is introduction history etiology pathogenesis uh, its clinical features investigations and treatment coming to the introduction pemphigus is a blister or bubble it's an auto immune vesiculobullous disease characterized by auto antibodies against distinct adhesion molecules of the epidermis coming to the history in 1791 wichman coined the term pemphigus in 1844 kazenewe defined as pemphigus foliaceus in 1886 newman also find uh, warty granulations known as pemphigus vegetans uh, moreover present in the flexor regions uh, in 1926 senior and usher pemphigus erythematosus uh, in 1881 hospitz first described description of epidermal cells in patients uh, with pemphigus in 1943 civet uh, known as acanthol lysis which is a loss of coherence between the two cells in 1953 lever defined a bullous pemphigoid both clinically and histopathologically clearly distinguished it from pemphigus in 1964 gutner and jordan find the auto antibodies in sera of pemphigus patients reactive with an intercellular substance coming to the classification pemphigus vulgaris its variant is pemphigus vegetans and pemphigus foliaceus variant is pemphigus erythematosus and endemic pemphigus next is pemphigus herpetiformis in used to pemphigus is thiol and non thiol in iga pemphigus two variants are there intra epidermal neutrophilic type and subcorneal pustular dermatosis that is scpd other than paraneoplastic pemphigus pemphigus associated with internal malignancy and other other than that neonatal pemphigus incidence is 0.5 to 2.7 cases per 1 lakh per year pemphigus vulgaris is the most common type in children pemphigus vulgaris is more when compared to the pemphigus foliaceus and slight female preponderance coming to its pathogenesis here we can see the <coughs> presentation of desmoglyin in skin and the oral type for adult skin desmoglyin one is present throughout in skin but oral basal and supra basal only present whereas desmoglyin 3 present in the lower layers of the skin and all layer of the oral region desmo what is desmoglyin desmoglyin is a catherin protein is a transmembrane glycoprotein it has four isoforms that is 1 2 2 4 1 and 3 present in the stratified squamous epithelium coming to the other pathogenesis theories like basal cell shrinkage hypothesis in this binding of pemphigus antibodies to basal keratinocytes it will change the cytoskeleton of the structure and consequent collapse on shrinkage of the cells other than that steric hindrance theory there will be auto antibodies act directly by interference interactions of desmoglyin on one cell with itself and desmocolins on the adjacent cells next is epitope spreading theory in this tissue damage from your primary autoimmune or inflammatory response uh, uh, due to the exposure of new epitopes forms a secondary autoimmune response so due to that antibody binds to extracellular domain on amino terminal region of desmoglyin it blocks adhesion sites of desmoglyin which is known as the steric inhibition so due to the inhibition there will be activation of intracellular signaling pathways and activation of egf receptor and phosphorylation of downstream substrates p38 mapk fast apoptotic cascades and there will be disruption of desmosomes and recognition of cytoskeleton of keratinocytes coming to the fast theory fast or fast ligand system is recognized as an important pathway for apoptosis apoptosis is nothing but uh, death of the cell it is induced in the cells and the tissues fast is widely expressed in normal as well as the neoplastic cells this fast l expression in normal tissues activated uh, by present by the activated t cells natural killer cells and macrophage lineage there will be ligation of fast by either agonistic and or antibody or fast the uh, triggers apoptosis coming to complement cascade theory this is 
there will be antibody binds to the antigen resulting activation of the complement cascade so fixation of a complement uh, components to surface of keratinocytes it will enhance the pathogenesis coming to the current concept of acantholysis in pemphigus there is anti perp or anti acetylcholine receptor antibody bind to their targets on the keratinocyte membrane uh, usually uh, there will be physiological control of polygonal cells shape and intercellular adhesion is blocked in uh, there will be increased in phosphorylation and adhesion molecules and dissociation of adhesion molecules from adhesion units on cell membrane so there will be collapse of tonofilament cytoskeleton and keratinocytes shrink with associated sloughing of desmosomes which is known as the acantholysis there will be autoimmune response elicited to desmosomal antigens and anti desmoglein antibodies bind to their targets on keratinocyte membrane and there will be formation of new intercellular a junction is prevented and on other side there will be activation of egfr map kinase and other signaling elements so due to that there will be intracellular calcium will be elevated there will be activation of executional caspases and initiation of programmed cell death that is apoptosis so it leads to an irreversible damage to nuclear and mitochondrial proteins because uh, currently this both um, theory result in the death of acantholytic cells and uh, tom stoning of surviving base cells which will be visible in the as histopathology next is desmoglein compensation theory other than that we can go for the clinical manifestation coming to pemphigus vulgaris it is the most common type it has three types mucosal dominant type mucocutaneous type and pure cutaneous type when a strong desmoglein 1 and weak desmoglein 3 is affected so coming to the presentation in mucous membrane there will be proceeds there will be preceding cutaneous lesions by months oral lesions will be around 50 to 70% site will be buccal palatal gingival mucosa and vermilion border of the lips and gi involvement include esophagus stomach duodenum and anus other than that conjunctiva nasal mucosa penis labia cervical vaginal lesions almost all the mucosal site of the body will be affected in the pemphigus vulgaris so this is one of the most important finding to differentiate from the bullous pemphigoid whereas in bullous pemphigoid there won't be any oral involvement so other than that there will be painful erosions these are the erosions we can see in the lip region and as well as the buccal mucosa and it is present in the vermilion border of the lips there will be thick hemorrhagic crust there will be a rare intact blisters the erosions will be the erosions will be ill defined irregularly shaped and slow to heal extended peripherally with shedding of the epithelium little or no surrounding inflammation so coming to the cutaneous lesions here we can see the localized and widespread Uh, lesions present over the scalp face intertigenous areas are nothing but the flexural sites like axilla elbow region popliteal region groin region and pressure points like uh, elbows knees it will be pruritic pruritic means nothing but itching or painful can be present there will be flaccid blister in um, pemphigus vulgaris so it is easily ruptured without any pressure whereas in bullous pemphigoid there will be tense blister here we can see uh, surrounding will be normal skin or we can see the erythematous skin the clear fluid can be present or it may be turbid seropurulent or hemorrhagic can be present this leads to spontaneous rupture and uh, rupture leaves an erosion or raw area it can be purulent the purulent shows the hypopion signs nothing but the half of uh, due to the gravity the pus will be settled down in the down region and upper will be clear fluid it appears as the uh, it appears as half moon which is known as hypopion sign the erosion will be painful and peripherally extension offensive odor will be present and nikolsky sign will be positive there will be no scarring or pigmentary changes will be present like hypo or hyperpigmentation 
other than that in nail we can see acute paronychia subungual hematoma onycholysis and odeco medicis paronychia is nothing but swelling in the lateral margins of the nail fold and subungual hematoma present onycholysis nothing but a splitting of the nail and onyco is separation of the nail plate from the nail nail bed so coming to the pregnancy patients there will be initial presentation will be worsening in baby it results in the neonatal pemphigus with mucosal or mucocutaneous lesions complications can lead to extensive oral erosion reduced to food intake and hypoproteinemia there will be candidal infection in ocular redness and photophobia can be present in nasal epistaxis will be present in larynx hostess and throat pain can be present in vagina dyspareunia when and in rectal uh, pain during defecation so coming to the pemphigus vegetans uh, variant of pemphigus vulgaris uh, present in the interdigenous areas as i so told uh, it is present in the flexure site uh, there will be cerebral tongue which is known as the premlatha sign and pustules will be present more when compared to the vesicles and erosions the erosions develop granulation tissue and crusting crust is nothing but dried up serum pus or blood it leads to an vegetating lesion these are the vegetating lesions aggravating factors due to the presentation in the flexures there will be more friction leads to maceration and due to the heat can be aggravated it can be due to adenovo or no reason or over pre existing pemphigus vulgaris are develops into pemphigus vulgaris uh, types will be pemphigus vegetans vegetans of halopu the and pemphigus vegetans of newman let we uh, see about the difference between the these two type newman comes in early type present as a vesicles and bulla whereas halopu type will be late type and will present as pustules as a vegetative type vesicles and bulla rupture to form hypertrophic granulating erosions which bleed easily and vegetating masses exuding serum and pus edges will be studded with small pustules and erosions of the edge of the lesions induce new vegetations which eventually become dry hyperkeratotic and fissured these pustules will coalesce to form the vegetating blocks these vegetations sometimes studded with pustules prognosis not as grave as the usual type of pemphigus resistant to therapy and remains for the longer period here we can see the multiple vegetative blocks which are studded with the pustules present over the face and interterigenous areas coming to the pemphigus foliaceous type desmoglyin 1 affected in the foliaceous type it present over the seboric areas nothing but the sebaceous gland rich areas like neck region upper back region chest region are more commonly affected then it uh, spread from seboric areas to generalized one there will be no mucosal involvement the scaly moist papules or superficial flaccid bulla present the surrounding lesion will be normal or earthy matters which leads the just and sharply demarcated moist lesion or erosion with a small vesicle along the border there will be corn corn flake like uh, uh, scaly will be present in the pemphigus foliaceus uh, this is one of the identification of the identification of the pemphigus foliaceous the type of scale is conflict like scaling and nail there will be vera sign yellow to dark brown color here also nikolsky sign is positive coming to herpes her pemphigus herpetiformis whereas desmoglyin 1 is more affected when compared to the desmoglyin 3 is a rare variant of pemphigus foliaceus pruritus will be present herpetiform arrangement that is dense vesicles will be grouped in the area which is a herpetiform arrangement like a herpes simplex or herpes zoster earthy matters articarial blocks with central healing and peripheral papillo vesicles it is less severe and chronic pose there will be invariable presence of neutrophils and eosinophils will be present it responds to dapsone 
dapsone. So pemphigus erythematosus, which is already known as uh, uh, senior Usher syndrome. So it will be localized pemphigus polyosus. Butterfly area of face is affected. And also other than that, seboric region, endotrigenous areas and oral mucosa are affected. The erythematous scaly crusted block with involved bull and denuded area with the sunlight exacerbation and clinical overlap with LE and histopathology. LE is nothing but lupus erythematosus. Uh, in this pemphigus erythematosus, there will be presentation of uh, lupus erythematosus along with the pemphigus uh, because uh, as we see the malar rash, uh, so also known as the butterfly rash present in the malar region. So 30 percentage of A and 80 percentage of lupus band test will be present. Uh, positive whereas in endemic uh, pemphigus foliaceous it is also a Brazilian pemphigus foliaceous decimogline one is affected it is a familial so striking sun exposed areas this is due to the sun exacerbation and burnt appearance will be present head and neck acral uh, it start with the head and neck region then spread to the acral side that is nothing but hands and feet uh, then becomes uh, involving the entire general generalized area of the body and then that in this oral mucosa is bad it is caused by black face simulium prurinosum so coming to endemic pemphigus foliaceous there will be presence of uh, uh, constitutional symptoms not just pyrexia or nothing but fever arthralgia and malice there will be flaccid bulla leaves and superficial erosions and blocks may vegetate and uh, when the there is a 90 percentage of the skin is involved known as the erythroderma and the leaf burning sensation that is fogo salvage or wildfire here also nikolsky sign is positive and hyperpigment indicates the inactive disease growth retarded children are most commonly affected in children uh, in adults there will be asus sperm there will be no sperms will be present it affects the fertility and signs of chronic depression so coming to drug induced pemphigus uh, can be due to thiol and non-thiol drugs so in thiol group there will be SH group of drug interact with SH group of desmoglein 1 and 3 there will be biochemical acantholysis uh, pemphigus foliaceous and pemphigus because erythematosus are common patterns in thiol group of drug induced pemphigus. The thiol group of drugs include penicillamine, captopril, pyroxicum, thiopyronone, and the lesions will develop after 11 months of ingestion of the drug and spontaneous remission on withdrawal of the drug. In non thiol group, there will be penicillin, ampicillin, rifampicin, cefetroxyl, phenytoin, phenobarbitone, and propranolol. The lesion develops after four months, around 50% of the spontaneous regression. So coming to IgA pemphigus, uh, common in axilla and groin region, neutrophilic infiltration and ac occasional acantholysis. Uh, there will be bound and circulating IgA antibody against epidermal surface component. Uh, two types will be there, subcorneal pustular type and intraepidermal neutrophilic type. Uh, there will be flaccid vesicles or pustules uh, over the erythematous or normal skin. Uh, pustules when the coalesce to form annular or succinate pattern. Uh, what is annular? There will be central clearing of the lesion with peripheral extension as present in the tinea carporis. Pattern with clearing in the center of scaly erythematous macules can be present here in Nikolsky sign is negative. Coming to paraneoplastic pemphigus. Here we can see the recalcitrant blistering, chronic mucocutaneous lesions, polymorphic lesions. So it can present various types like pemphigus, vulgus, bullous pemphigoid, uh, graft versus post disease, lichen planus, and 10 like lesions. It is associated with neoplasm, systemic involvement, poor response to the, the therapy, and poor prognosis. So paraneoplastic pemphigus, there are two, three major mechanisms, mainly molecular mimicry typing and papitope spreading as we discussed previously in this associated mainly non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, CLL, Castleman tumor, Waldenstrom macroglobin, thymoma and retroperitoneal sarcoma. So coming to paraneoplastic pemphigus, the clinical feature include it affects around 45 to 70 years. Upper body is the commonest site. In cutaneous, there will be pyruritic polymorphous lesions. Polymorphous means multiple type of lesions can be present in the same person. 
சோசனம் கேன் பி சோரியாசி ஃபார்ம் அதன் தட் சோரியாசி ஃபார்ம் வெஜிடேட்டிவ் ஆர் பஸ்டுலர் எரப்ஷன்ஸ் கேன் பி ப்ரெசன்ட் பேப்பிள்ஸ் லீட் டு பிஸ்டஸ் அண்ட் எரோஸ் ப்ரெசன்ட் ஓவர் தி ட்ரங்க் எக்ஸ்ட்ரீமிட்டிஸ் ஃபார்ம்ஸ் அண்ட் சோல்ஸ் தி ஃபார்மோ பிளான்ட் ஆர் டார்கெட் லேஷன்ஸ் அலோபேஷியா இஸ் ப்ரெசன்ட் அண்ட் நிகோல்ஸ்கி சைன் கேன் பி பாசிட்டிவ் ஆர் நெகட்டிவ் in mucosal region there will be recalcitrant oral stomatitis recalcitrant means it does not uh, respond to the therapy ulcers of the vermilion border of the lip which will there will be hemorrhagic crusting uh, or the vermilion border of the lips uh, two third of the patient will have pseudo mammary conjunctivitis simply from visual impairment and one third will be showing bronchiolitis obliterans uh, where bronchial mucosa which are rich in which are rich in desmoplakin uh, mucous membranes of esophageal stomach dio dinam and in the stains are also affected so here we can see the multiple erosions vesicles and bulla present varying sizes over the mucosal region extremities and trunk region here we can see the nail is nail also affected here we can see the alopecia the patchy loss of hair over the scalp region so coming to the diagnostic criteria there will be major criteria and minor criteria major criteria include polymorphous mucocutaneous eruption concurrent internal neoplasia catastic serum immuno precipitation findings and minor criteria include positive cytoplasmic staining of rat bladder epithelium by indirect immunofluorescence intracellular and basement membrane immunoreactants and acantholysis in biopsy specimen at least three major or two major my major with two or less than two minor criteria should be present so these are the modified handle criteria there will be clinical histopathological dif iif and immuno precipitation criteria the high sensitivity include associated lymphoproliferative disease if labeling of rat bladder immuno blot can be done other investigation to rule out malignancy is bc blood cell count that is complete hemogram can be done lactate dehydrogenase pro cytometry as well as computed tomography of the chest abdomen and pelvis coming to neonatal pemphigus in adult skin desmoglyin 1 is present in skin and uh, oral basal and supra basal whereas desmoglyin 3 present in lower layers of the skin and all layers in the oral mucosa in neonatal skin desmoglyin 1 and 3 both present in the skin upper layer desmoglyin 3 in supra basal region maternal uh, pemphigus vulgaris desmoglyin 3 is affected more than the desmoglyin 1 neonatal more risk of developing uh, uh, developing uh, pemphigus vulgaris it is self limiting around 3 to four weeks uh, with catabolism of maternal antibodies Co- coming to the scoring system there are various scoring system pemphigus area activity score pemphigus area pemphigus activity score pemphigus disease area index autoimmune bullous skin disorder intensity score saravats oral pemphigus scoring coming to pemphigus area and activity score this is the main score we are using currently the markers include clinically like number of new blisters per day peripheral extension of existing blisters and nikolsky sign and other than activity area percentage should be calculated other than that mucus membrane markers like area and severity by adding this score we have to uh, choose the medications coming to investigation the first will be nikolsky sign nikolsky sign uh, nikolsky sign the procedure include include that we have to give you a tangential pressure over the skin over the bony prominent area the skin under overlying the bone bony area we have to given tangential pressure when the skin split from the basal layer that is epidermal split will be present leaving an raw area is known as the nikolsky sign positive it, it, it is a, when over the bony prominence there is an uh, erosion on an tangential tangential pressure is known as the direct nikolsky sign whereas indirect one we have to do perilational region tangential pressure if you give the cleaves an erosion or epidermal split is known as the positive or indirect nikolsky sign and uh, 
it usually differentiate between the intra epidermal sub epidermal blistering disorder can be elicited in mucosal membrane also so coming to nikolsky sign direct already i told direct over bony prominence away from blister is the activity of the disease and inter, indirect or more over the perilesional region and there will be microscopic type rubbing normal perilesional skin leaving and microscopic splits are using the rubber we can use that there will be my, rubbing the skin with the rubber uh, we can see the microscopic split uh, seen in the bi biopsy uh, dry indicating the reepithelialization that is resolving of the lesions where wet lesions uh, with the moist glistening base indicates the activity of the lesion nikolsky phenomenon include no re erosions epidermis fail to move over the dermis uh, what is false nikolsky or shaklakov sign will be present in certain conditions like uh, Stayers and uh, mainly mainly Staphylococcus callus skin syndrome. There will be subepidermal extension on pulling of the remnant of roof or blister. Coming to bulla spread sign or lut sign, there will be marking unidirectional pressure, uh, will be peripheral extension. Coming to Asbo Hansen sign, small bulla or vesicle pressure in the center of the bulla region. Coming to Zang smear, there will be sensitivity of 100% and specificity 44%. There is nothing but when we find a fresh bulla or vesicle using the using the sharp edge of the scalpel region, we have to put a Knit over the, uh, we have to put a knit over the uh, near the base of the uh, lesion and sponge out the fluid with using the uh, using the cotton swab. We have to sponge out the lesion and using the blunt edge of the scalpel, uh, scraping the base of the lesion and smear it over the glass right and stain with gymster stain and uh, and staining what type of the cells are present. Based on that, we can find the differential disease uh, using the Zang smear, which is can be done as a bedside procedure. So, so as we I discussed about you your procedure using you can use other than Jimsa, Leishman or Azur B stain can be used. What we can see is mainly pathognomonically acantholytic cells or zanc cell with morning edge. Other findings will be Sertoli rosette and the cell streptocytes. Zang cells without a surrounding inflammation will be with a large number loosely adherent or discrete present in the pemphigus. Cetoly rosette with central necrobiotic etnocytes with surrounding leukocytes present in the herpes zoster and streptocytes, chain of leukocytes joined by filaments, glue-like substance seen in the pemphigoid group like a bullous pemphigoid. So, as I discussed previously, what are the types of leash, uh, cells can be seen in uh, Zang smear? In Pemphigus vulgaris and Pemphigus vegetans, there will be suprabasal split, whereas Pemphigus foliaceous and erythematosus, there will be subcornea split. Coming to biopsy. In biopsy, pemphigus vulgaris, we have to take 4 mm punch excision. Um, there will be fresh, uh, less than uh, 24 hours, small vesicle or uh, one third of the peripheral portion of your blister or two third of perilational skin can be present. In edge of the erosion, if no intact vesicle or bulla is present, early vesicle, there will be eosinophilic spongiosis and well developed vesicle shows suprabasal split with acantholytic cells and row of tombstone appearance. We can see the row of tombstone appearance with the suprabasal split. This is a basal layer. There will be split. We can see in the suprabasal side, and these are the arrangement of row of tombstone appearance. So the erosion shows no epidermis, few acantholytic cells, suprabasal split with acantholytic cells in lining of appendages, and there will be superficial dermis shows a scanty perivascular lymphohistiocytic infiltrate and skin biopsy. Pemphigus vegetans shows a pseudo epitheliomatous hyperplasia, occasionally intraepidermal eosinophilic abscess, acanthosis, suprabasal cleft, papillomatosis, villi formation, villi formation, and downward proliferation of epithelial strand and dermis shows rich in eosinophils. So coming to pemphigus foliaceous, we can see the subcorneal split. Subcorneal is nothing but the first layer of the uh, stratum corneum. 
of the epidermis is the first layer of the epidermis is, we can see the subcorneal splitter in older lesions there will be mild hyperkeratosis the dyskeratotic changes in granular layer and acanthosis nothing but increase in thickness of the layer and papillomatosis there will be elongation of the retinaceous so other than that pefigus herpetiformis we can see the eosinophilic spongiosis spongiosis nothing but edema slight or no acantholysis there will be subcorneal pustules with neutrophils and eosinophils coming to in iga pemphigus there will be intra epidermal blisters or pustules subcorneal region there will be scpd other than the supra basal there will be intra epidermal neutrophilic type can be seen so coming to immunofluorescence this is an indirect immunofluorescence there will be direct immunofluorescence there are two types in direct we will add the antibody to the patient uh, antigen there will be antigen antibody reaction because of the presence of fluorescence we can identify the this reaction whereas in indirect we add antibody with fluorescent probe and additional patient serum to the normal skin serum based on that we can uh, we can use uh, um, monkey esophagus guinea pig esophagus or rat bladder in direct immunofluorescence um, in a pemphigus vulgaris and polysis there will be fish net pattern or chicken wire pattern whereas pemphigus erythematosus uh, there will be in granular deposits present as an efficient pattern where sigia pemphigus uh, mainly present over the lower or entire epidermis and scpd there will be upper epidermis iga will be predominantly present in uh, paraneoplastic pemphigus both igg and c3 present in the granular linear deposit uh, will be presented it will be weak diffuse and non specific this is the immunofluorescence showing the epidermal split and pattern of the fishnet pattern coming to day of the hair when no consent for when the patient is not giving consent to take a skin biopsy uh, early positivity is present in dif that is direct immunofluorescence of the hair we can take the outer root sheath of the anagen similar to epidermal keratinocytes it can be plucked washed with pps uh, and uh, for 10 minutes then incubated in fluorescent uh, labeled conjugate for 1 hour then washed and uh, viewed under the fluorescent microscope in the smoke lion one in hair it present in the inner root sheath and innermost outer root sheath whereas the smoke lion three in hair it present throughout outer root sheath and only base layer in infundibulum whereas in iaf sensitivity is 100% detect the circulating auto antibodies in patient serum iaf titers can be correlate with the disease severity which predict the prognosis and helps to monitor the disease to therapy substrate include monkey esophagus like a pemphigus for pemphigus vulgaris a normal human skin and guinea pigs and rat bladder can be used and circulating antibody not detected in early cases remission pemphigus herpetiformis and drug induced pemphigus like antibodies can also be present in other conditions like extensive burns 10 sle um, bullous pemphigus cicatricial pemphigus like planus neoplasia pencil reaction and in even normal persons we can see titers we can when there will be two times of a uh, rise in the titer in the impending relapse we can see then other than that we can come for differential diagnosis for pemphigus vulgaris for mucosal lesions we can see acute herpetic gingival stomatitis after stomatitis erythema multiforme sieve sjs lichen planus sri and mmp other than that pemphigus cutaneous lesions bullous pemphigoid linear igia bullous dermatosis erythema multiforme haley haley disease and transient acantholytic dermatosis also known as grover's disease so coming to foliaceous other uh, diseases like pimpetigo scpd subacute cutaneous le cerberic dermatitis and herpetiformis include dermatitis herpetiformis bullous pemphigoid pemphigus vulgaris coming to paraneoplastic pemphigus as i discussed 
previously the other polymorphic lesions can be present emf 10 lesions epidermis bullous aqueous zeta pemphigus vulgaris drug induced bullous pemphigus cicatricial pemphigoid after stomatitis pesche disease lichen planus and persistent herpes simplex virus infections coming to iga pemphigus cecpd dermatitis herpetiformis foliaceous herpetiformis and linear diseases can be present so these are the definitions and parameters just you can know the uh, how we can define like for control of disease activity end of consolidation phase and complete remission of therapy coming to the indicators of relapse when there is a positive uh, desmoglein 3 in elisa and positive daf mean relapse free period include short period and other than that in general measures we have to give when there is a the, disruption in the skin there will be easily acquirement of secondary infection so we have to do culture and sensitivity of the lesion to rule out to pro to give proper antibiotic therapy other than that there will be loss of fluids and electrolytes from denuded area so in case of severe and extensive disease which can lead to the erythroderma so we have to provide adequate nutrition soft easily chewable diet regular dressing with petrol item gauze or gauze with topical antibody cream and toothbrush soft brushes should be given for oral cavity to avoid furthermore erosions so oral care includes soft diets and soft tooth brushes topical analgesics or anesthetic like mucopain gel can be given and benzidine benzidamine hydrochloride 0.15% can be given antiseptic mouth washes like chlorhexidine excedrine mouthwash can be given and erosions include for erosions we can give metamethasone 0.5 mg tablet dissolved in 10 ml of water four times daily can be given. Given. and iso isolated oral triamcinol acetonide can be uh, uh, given with the addition for better absorption topical therapy high uh, high potent steroids like clobetasol can be given other than that immunomodulator like uh, tacrolimus and other than that uh, topical epidermal growth factor can be given intralesional steroids for recalcitrant lesions can be given mild disease with a few lesions and new lesions after tapering systemic therapy can be given so in cutaneous 5 to 10 mg per ml and in mucosal 10 to 20 mg per ml should be give and 0 0.05 to 0 0.1 ml per side can be give with uh, every one to two weeks until healing can be given and systemic steroids are prednisolone deflazacort prednisolone we can give mild to moderate 60 to 80 mg and for severe 80 to 120 mg there will be 50 percent increase in four to seven days until control 50 percent decrease every two weeks after 80 to 90 percent in improvement deflazacort dexamethasone and other regimens are there and adjuvant immunosuppressive such as cyclophosphamide azathioprine uh, mm of mycophenolate morphotil, um, cyclosporine, dapsone, and methotrexate can be given. And tetracycline, nicotinamide, nothing but uh, niacin can be, supplementation can be given. And refractory pemphigus, that is failure to therapy, we can give cyclophosphate, azathioprine, methotrexate, and mycophenolate morphotil. So management of refractory pemphigus include pulsed corticosteroid therapy can be given and adjuvants like uh, uh, adjuvant should be given along with steroid to uh, to induce early remission steroid sparing effect and recalcitrant pemphigus so severe or rec recalcitrant cases of pemphigus vulgaris we can and you pulsed, uh, pulsed corticosteroid, cyclophosphamide, rituximab, MMF, methotrexate, gold, chlorambucil, repeated course of IV immunoglobulin, plasma exchange, and extracorporeal photophoresis. Coming to pulse therapy, there are VCP therapy, which induces the fast healing, dexamethasone, along with the uh, rapid action, a reduction in total cumulative steroids, and long term, we can give along uh, within first plus the first pulse of the therapy there will uh, be healing of the lesions then we have to taper and stop and cyclophosphamide pulse can be given dap uh, that is dexamethasone along with dex uh, azathioprine can be given and dmp pulse therapy and then rituximab is an immuno uh, uh, rituximab it is an antibody therapy can be uh, given um, for uh, 
such other than um, other than um, pemphigus we can give rheumatoid arthritis uh, protocol uh, lymphoma protocol uh, uh, rituximab uh, with uh, iv immunoglobulin desmamethasone uh, pulse therapy can be given so three doses every star every recovery starts after six months uh, with the effect last for six to nine months uh. So IV immunoglobulin, we have to give 2 gram per kg per body weight per cycle, divided over 3 to 5 days, repeated every 3 to 4 weeks can be given. So plasma exchange include uh, with both uh, corticosteroid therapy and immunosuppressive should be given, given in case of difficult cases. So extracorporeal photophoresis can be given to 2 day cycles given every 2 to 4 weeks, minimum of 2 cycles uh, in recalcitrant cases. Symptoms of hypovolemia is the main side effect in case of extracorporeal photophoresis. And TNF alpha in antagonists include infliximab, etanacept, other than that, adalimumab. In that, two types, infliximab, etanacept can be given. Others like cholinergic agonists like pyrostigmine, bromide, and KC706 can be given. Some but newer biologicals include Beltuzumab, Obinutuzumab, Ofatumumab, Okaratuzumab, and Belimumab. Summary include in pemphigus vulgaris disease, uh, auto antibodies present in mucosal typus IgG, mucocutaneous typus IgG, and desmoglein effect, desmoglein 3 and 1, pemphigus polyaceous auto antibodies IgG, and desmoglein is 1, paraneoplastic pemphigus IgG and C3 are uh, uh, auto antibodies, other than that, desmoglein 1, plectin 3, desmoplakin 1 and 2. PPAG1, Envoplakin, and Periplakin. In drug induced, both Desmoglein 1 and 3 present as antigen and IgG antibody. IgA pemphigus in both the IgA and Desmoglein 1 is present. There will be intraepidermal and subepidermal blisters in intraepidermal pemphigus vulgaris and IgA pemphigus, whereas in subepidermal pemphigoid is more common. So these are the various uh, uh, variants of the pemphigus vulgaris uh, with the uh, age groups, uh, uh, most commonly middle age in pemphigus, vulgaris, vegetans and foliaceous, whereas in endemic, intracellular and paraneoplastic, you can see the children are affected. In cutaneous uh, spread, uh, scalp, face, uh, trunk region present in vulgaris and foliaceous, whereas vegetan is flexure, head and neck in endemic region, axilla or the uh, flexure region intracellular and upper body or the paraneoplastic either. Paraneoplastic pemphigus, mucus uh, membrane affected in pemphigus, vulgaris, vegetans and the paraneoplastic is present mainly as a placid blister, vegetative lesions in the pemphigus vegetans. So, this is associated nothing but other uh, than. Uh, uh, like uh, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, type 1 diabetes in pemphigus, vulgaris uh, commonly. Though other than that, IgA monoclonal gammopathy in IgA dermatosis and lymphoproliferative diseases. Among this poor prognostic factor goes for paraneoplastic pemphigus based on the criteria we have to treat. Them. And uh, we, based on the score, we have to treat the patient. And mainstay of treatment is uh, steroid therapy have to give uh, orally as well as uh, topically along with the proper antibiotic and skin care helps the patient to heal and recover better and regular follow-up should be done as we started the steroid. When the patient stops the steroid, it can lead to rebound effect. So we have to instruct the patient for regular follow-up. And last option we can give us a newly, we are giving a rituximab which is patient should be observed in the ward and then we have to discharge up. And these are my references. Thank you. Thank you, students, listening patiently to my lecture. And thank you so much for this much attendance.